Haven't seen No Way Home yet? Then watch this low-budget Spider-Man first. I think I have... superpowers. He's like Spider-Man. Please believe me, he's gonna be a superhero, just stay for a while. Give me five minutes. <laughs> this is superhero movie. The movie begins with Rick Riker screaming at the driver to stop the vehicle. The driver steps on the brake. The story of my life is not for the faint of heart. Yeah, you don't say. Rick is in love with a girl. Not that girl. Jill Johnson is first love, in a relationship with Lance Landers. Then, Trey, Rick's friend, loudly calls him to sit with him. Trey immediately becomes talkative, but Rick is not paying attention to him and looks at Jill. Trey notices it and bluntly tells Rick to get over Jill as she will never be with him because she belongs to the popular group. Fast forward, Rick and his classmates go on a scientific field trip to a research lab at Amalgamated Pharmaceuticals. Dr. Strom welcomes the class to the animal genetic lab, and they immediately scatter themselves and explore. Dr. Strom warns everyone not to use flash photography as the animals are sensitive to light. Too late doc. It flew away. Nice save. Rick quickly puts the fire out and kicks it, accidentally hitting Lance. He immediately prepares to fight with Rick when his uncle Lou stops him. Dr. Strom then introduces Lou Landers to everyone, a scientist and the CEO of the company. After giving a short speech to the class, Lou coughs, blood coming out of his mouth. Rick concerningly asks Lou about the blood. This is healthy golf blood. After that, Lance pushes Rick to a pile of poop and threatens him before leaving. Rick gets up. He then sees a spray bottle and sprays with it when he hears Dr. Strom talking about a pheromone that causes animals to mate, the H209, and then... <laughs> Meanwhile, everyone has no idea about the humping while Dr. Strom tells them about the genetically enhanced super dragonflies. However, one missing dragonfly flies to Rick and bites him on the neck, causing him to stumble onto the chemicals, so... <laughs> Following that, we see Rick's Aunt Lucille and Uncle Albert. They had some sweet talk. And you've always had a tiny pe... Yeah, maybe not that sweet. Rick comes home, looking sickly. Don't forget to feed the fish. boy. Uncle Albert tries to comfort his nephew by reading him a book. And once a month you'll bleed from your bejeweled. This may be the wrong book. Tomorrow we'll circumcise you. Yeah, I would pass out too. The same night, Lou informs the investors that. I have one hour left to live. It was on sale. He presents a new invention to heal it. From the... From the lift it over, lift it over. Lou tests the machine for the first time. As expected, the trial did not work, so an investor ridicules Lou for his failure. Suddenly, Lou tightly grips on the investor's hand as he sucks the life out of him. Lou frees himself from the machine and sucks the life out of his investors. Uh. Hmm, Seuss. The morning after. How long was I asleep? Five days. <laughs> he finds the bit mark gone. He then searches for about dragonfly bite in his computer, but instead, it humorously makes him confess his virginity through a series of questions. Suddenly, a message from an anonymous person pops up on his screen, confusing Rick. Rick gets up and sees Jill at the house next door. His aunt calls him and when he gets back... Oh. Later that day, students and faculty warmly welcome Dr. Stephen Hawking. I haven't had sex years. My nurse is a lesbian. Okay. Subsequently, Rick encourages himself to confess to Jill when his hands get stuck holding the faucet. The faucet breaks and... He did it! Nice save. As expected, Lance punches Rick but he dodges. Hmm, looks familiar. <gasps> he accidentally throws Hawking into a swarm of beasts causing chaos to the fair. Following that, in an alleyway, Rick sticks his hand on the wall and climbs it. Suddenly, Rick dances hip-hop while still on the wall. <laughs> Just then, Rick hears a commotion on the streets. Rick quickly jumps and pushes them. The witnesses immediately go to the scene and see Rick unharmed and the truck's front broken. They called him a hero. If I hadn't have pushed her out of the way, she would have died. Well, at least the dog is alive. That night, Rick gets home and... How did you do that? It's easy. No, I don't think so. His uncle asked him about the fast reflexes, so Rick says... I think I have... superpowers. His uncle doesn't believe him and he bets him to throw punches and guarantees he'll evade all of it. He proved it and Trey said they could be famous and rich. Don't forget the b But Rick doesn't want any of it in his uncle. You're not my father. I love you like your father did. I had f your mother just like your father did. What? Rick leaves. Outside, Rick witnesses a violent fight at the house next door. Jill comes out, upset, so Rick comforts her. Suddenly, Lance arrives, but Jill tells him that maybe she could take a ride in his car. The next day, Rick immediately looks for a $300 car when a video of Professor Xavier pops up on his screen, talking about his powers. 
Rick is confused after the video but then dismisses upon realizing something. Later that day, Uncle Albert drives Rick and his aunt to the bank to loan, rejecting his application causes poor, but... Thanks for the loan, Mr. Thompson! <laughs> desperate, Rick makes a sexual advantage to the teller, but still rejects him. I don't see how that's my problem. Suddenly, a robber makes a scene and quickly tries to leave when the door gets stuck. Rick stupidly helps him, angering the teller. I don't see how that's my problem. Rick hears gunshots outside, so he quickly goes out and sees a crowd. Rick squeezes himself in them, relieved to see a monkey dancing. I, I thought something terrible had happened. Well, an old guy did get shot over there. Rick quickly goes to him, and his uncle says with great power comes. Great responsibility? I, I was gonna stick with the, the ambulance takes him to the hospital. That night, after visiting his uncle, Rick finally meets Professor Xavier, a psychic. Professor Xavier takes him to his school for mutants. Here we have children who can walk through walls. We have children who think they can walk through walls. <laughs> Suddenly, Professor Xavier's wife interrupts them and condemns her husband for cheating with Invisible Girl. Rick wants to know the secret of superheroes. You want to know the secret? Oh. Make a costume, <laughs> That night, Rick spends hours designing the coolest costume. Yeah, that's cool. Then, Trey enters his room and finds Rick wearing a combination of green and black outfits with a dragonfly sewn in the middle, dubbing himself as the dragonfly. But then he forgets to make a hole for him to breathe. Later that night, he meets Human Torch and shows his powers. He asks Rick to put out the fire. Get the fire extinguisher! That's not how you use it. Later, Rick tries to fly but fails. Rick uses his power to fight crime and later becomes a media sensation, getting all the public's attention, even celebrities. Meanwhile, Dr. Strom informs Lou that unless he has Cerulean, he must kill it every day for him to live. Lou then sees a newspaper about Hawking having the chemical and devises a plan to steal it. Meantime, Rick applies as a photographer in a newspaper company, giving the boss pictures of him dressed in his costume. You're the dragonfly. No, 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 look. One of the employees informs them that there is a standoff in his school, so Rick quickly leaves before the boss instructs him to get photos of the dragonfly. Subsequently, the police force saves the students from Lou's alter ego, the hourglass. Just then, the dragonfly gets at the university and fights the villain. Oh, this is one of my favorite scenes in Spider-Man. Wait, what? Then Hourglass bombs another door and escapes with the university's Cerulean. The morning after, and Lucille warns Rick that because he is a hero now, villains will come after his loved ones to hurt him, so he should be careful about his identity. That night, Rick tries to confess his feelings to Jill, but he remembers his aunt's advice. Keep your identity a secret, Rick. Once a month you'll bleed from your vagina. Not that one, so he chooses not to say anything to her. Disappointed, Jill bids goodbye and leaves, but Rick sees a group of men following her in an alley. Oh, shit. Jill runs fast as she can but meets a dead end. Just then, the dragonfly comes out and beats the perverts while Jill looks at him with love in her eyes. Oh, God, it hurts, it hurts. Oh, God. After that, Jill and the dragonfly kiss as the rain pours. That was so good. I know right. Meanwhile, Lou grins as he looks at his screen displaying thousands of lives equivalent to immortality. After which, as Jill is helping Aunt Lucille prepare food for Thanksgiving, Lance arrives with his uncle Lou, who is uninvited. Then, Lou offers to fetch Rick in his room, but Rick has just gotten inside, still wearing his costume. Rick is in the bathroom, doing his business, when Lou knocks at the door and comes in. I'm pretty sure you remember this scene. Bit of a slob, isn't it? Well, this one is better. Rick pisses all over the place while on the ceiling, hiding from Lou. Ah, stupid. After that, Rick enters the house. They start to eat but... Uh, 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 not till we say grace. Yeah, show some manners. As they eat, Lucille informs everyone about Rick being the unofficial photographer of the dragonfly, casting Lou's attention. What happened to your arm? I see your wrist is bandaged. And you have a cut on your lip. My crack pipe broke. You're what? Lou and Lance leave the place. Afterward, while Rick indirectly pursues Jill, using the dragonfly as an alibi, his aunt continues to fart loudly, like a fart machine. I know exactly what I want. Just about when they kiss, the hourglass barges in through the wall, so Rick throws something at him but accidentally knocks himself out with it. With that, the hourglass kills Aunt Lucille. The doctor informs Rick that his aunt died, but his uncle has awakened from his coma. He then warns Rick not to give any bad news to Uncle Albert but... Is it Lucille? No sir, it's not your dead wife, remember? No bad news. Yeah, no sh**. Subsequently, a disastrous comic funeral is held for Aunt Lucille's burial. This is your wife! <laughs> ah, give me five minutes. <laughs> causing her body to be cremated accidentally. After that, Jill confronts Rick, seeking a romantic relationship with him, but gets heartbroken after Rick blatantly rejects her. You're no longer in my five. Thereupon, Rick loses the will to be a hero and leaves depressingly.
Look at you, eating junk food, wearing fake beards. But Uncle Albert encourages him not to stop helping people. Then they see a news report about the Empire City Convention, where thousands of people will attend, including the world's prestigious personalities, and realize that the hourglass will be at the event. Lou receives the award. Deuce bag of the year! After Lou receives the embarrassing award, Rick stops him and asks for his help to find the hourglass, ignorant that the villain is in front of him. Lou tricks Rick and points an innocent monk as the hourglass. Suddenly, the curtains open, revealing the dragonfly assaulting a monk, but he refuses to stop and strips him naked, trying to convince everyone that he is carrying cerulean. The guards finally stop him, but he frees himself from them, accidentally throwing a guard to the crowd, causing chaos among the guests, even the religious ones. <laughs> Jill discovers that Lou is the hourglass, so he escapes the chaotic crowd. Rick quickly follows but is confused to see a hero convention. Not long after, the hourglass uses a machine, throws a bomb to the roof, blasting the ceiling. But before leaving, he throws a blade to the dragonfly, but Jill jumps in front of it, saving him. While the dragonfly is holding Jill's body, Stephen Hawking speaks to him and motivates him to stop the hourglass from committing genocide. Encouraged, the dragonfly runs after him, untamed, the dragonfly gripped the hourglass's hand, bringing Jill back to life. Where am I? You're with me. You love it. Get off. The engine is still running, and there are only seconds left before the villain reaches immortality. The hourglass then throws a bomb at the dragonfly, which he tries to throw back, but instead gets stuck on his genitals. Left with no choice, he goes to the hourglass just in time for the explosion. The dragonfly looks at the broken machine when he hears Jill screaming his name while falling. The dragonfly quickly jumps off, forgetting he cannot fly. This is a really tall building. Jill realizes that the dragonfly is Rick and kisses him upon seeing his ring. Unexpectedly, Rick finally gains his wings and saves Jill from death. Back at the top, Stephen Hawking thanks Rick for saving the people, including him, but then Uncle Albert accidentally pushes his wheelchair to the edge, causing Hawking to fall. The movie ends with Rick and Jill flying up in the sky with Rick's voiceover. Happy. Oops. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.